The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Gospel of the Lord. As Jesus emerged from the obscurity of Nazareth, he began to proclaim the good news of the kingdom publicly. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe in the gospel. And imagine if you were among the hearers of this startling new message, you might ask, and rightly so, how will I know if the kingdom is near me? How will I be able to tell in my life if this proclamation is true for me? And perhaps our Lord had a sense of this question in the, in the mind, in the hearts of his hearers, because today in the gospel, he gives the answer. How do I know that the kingdom of God is near? The answer is the Beatitudes. Perhaps of all our Lord's famous words, this has account, the argument can be made, these are the most famous of all. The Beatitudes are sure signs that the kingdom has reached me. The Beatitudes give me the certainty that the Lord of the kingdom is knocking at the door of my heart. This is assurance of the promise. Blessed are you, Jesus says, blessed are you. And what he is doing is proclaiming happiness. Happiness is the natural end for human beings. When you got up this morning, did you ask yourself, Now, what can I do today to guarantee that I'll be miserable? I I just must be unhappy today, so what can I do to ensure that this will be the worst possible day? Because that's what I want. No one gets up that way. When we get up in the morning, we are hoping that it will be a happy day. Before we ever think about anything, this is instinctively the way we're oriented. This is what we're made for, is to be happy. That's why God made us this way. And we can recognize when we, when we are happy. He has also given us the capacity to realize what makes us happy and to seek it. But the happiness that Jesus speaks of is the blessedness. It's happiness of a particular kind. It's a deeper and a lasting and most important, a true happiness, not a false and a misleading happiness, or a short-sighted or short-circuited happiness. It's a lasting happiness because blessedness is a happiness bestowed by the blessed one, by the one who chooses to give us blessedness, to call us to it, and to help us to recognize it and to seek it evermore. Not just a happiness that we may stumble upon or find for ourselves, Blessed are you. And this is happiness, this blessedness is the blessedness of the kingdom of God. 
Well, that's all very attractive, except when we begin to attend to the details of what Jesus promises, of the signs of certainty, it dawns on us that this happiness, this blessedness of the kingdom is linked to what the world considers unhappiness. The poor, the insulted, the persecuted, blessed are you. To the eyes of the world, this is far from happiness. And yet, St. Paul takes up this very theme, as we heard in the letter to the Corinthians today, and he says that God chose the weak, the lonely, uh, the lowly, and the despised, those who count for nothing. These are the ones God chose to be blessed. Perhaps if we seek a key to this puzzle of the Beatitudes, we can find it in the very first one. Perhaps this is the door that opens the path to, to the heart of this happiness that is promised us. And it's not accidental that it comes first. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit. When we consider that phrase, poverty of spirit, and we stop on the last word, we realize that spirit refers to breath, respirare, to breathe. And so take a second and just attend to your own breathing right this minute. How much breath do you have in the bank? How much do you have in reserve? How long can you supply from your savings account of breath the breath you live by every minute? The fact is, our account is empty. We have nothing in reserve to breathe by. To live is to breathe. Your every breath comes from God. How many breaths have you drawn in your life? How many more do you have to draw until your death? Which have you provided for and how could you provide for them in advance? Every breath you have drawn our drawing and will draw comes from the treasury of the Creator. And all the life that comes with your breathing comes from Him too. There's a simple conclusion to this very easily verifiable experience, and that is that we are, whether we recognize it or not, poor in spirit. We are in debt up to our ears, and we will never be out of debt to our Creator. We will always owe Him, so to speak, what we receive freely as His gift. And we can never, ever hope to provide it for ourselves. We are literally poor in spirit. The question is whether we recognize that and whether we accept it. And Jesus says to us, Blessed are the poor in spirit who know and accept their poverty. And from there, everything follows, and the door to the kingdom opens up. Poor in spirit, poor in spirit know that the kingdom of God is at hand because their desires are transformed by the acceptance of the good news. Their desires are transformed, I say, and they experience, I say they, I'm referring to the saints whose testimony about their inner experience we have in abundance. And they are the ones who are indeed poor in spirit par excellence. And they have, they enjoy the experience of inner freedom, 